Okay, there have been no one signed up to speak in the open forum. We'll get right into our agenda items. Our first will be consent agenda. Does any member need any item full for consideration? So you're just abstaining. You're not asking that uh, yeah, we'll 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 pull it out. Yeah. We'll pull it out. We'll vote on this. So, okay. Anything else? If not, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So maybe. We have a motion by Mr. Duran, second by Mr. Stephen Martinez, to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item <coughs> regarding appointment of election officials. Any questions? If not, all in favor show a hand, right hand. It's approved and presented, save the item E, 6 zero. Thank you very much. So now let's uh, yeah. consider, and, if appropriate, approve the appointment of election officials as presented. Do we have a uh, oh, uh, The Board of Trustees is required to appoint an election judge who will appoint the necessary judge and clerk to conduct an election ordered by the Board. The administration recommends that early voting be per by personal appearance uh, be conducted at the Jasper County Hall. Um, 465 South Main, Jasper, Texas, and that Julie Dickerson be appointed as the early voter, voting administrator. In addition to the above recommendation, we recommend Julie Dickerson be appointed as election administrator for the school trustee election order for May 4th, 2019. It is further recommended that the election administrator be allowed to employ four judges and 12 clerks for conducting the election. At this time, the administration recommends that the board of trustee approve the appointment of the election official named above, and she be allowed to employ a maximum of four judges and 12 clerks for conducting the election. We have a recommendation from administration to approve the appointment of election uh, officials as presented. Do we have a motion? We have a motion by Ms. Stewart. Second. Second by Ms. Martindale. Any questions? Clear conflict. No questions. All in favor of the motion as presented, show a right hand. And it carries 5 0. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I should Tom also abstain there. Not necessarily. I haven't, we've done it every single year when y'all were elected, when, when, or when the other elections were, where the I just felt like it had been, I the reason I did is because I just felt like I was going for re-election that I did not want anyone to show their lives or anything like that, so that's why I declared. I can stay, I, mean, I don't have a problem with that. But it's, well, I don't think there is a conflict of interest in the fact that we've used the same election official for like 42 years, <laughs> uh, kind of a moot point. But, I mean, I certainly understand. I, I, I fully oh, support Ms. Dickerson. Yeah. I mean, 100%. <laughs> She's done a great job. That did pass by zero, Mr. Kelly. Okay, our first business action item, our only business action item, will be to consider and if appropriate, approve the turnaround plan for Parnell Elementary and resolution as presented. Ms. Wooler? Tonight is another presentation uh, for Parnell Elementary. It's called the Turnaround Plan, the TAP. Um, a few months ago, uh, we brought to you the TIP, uh, the Targeted Improvement Plan. <clears throat> I don't know, next month it may be the TOP. <laughs> but tonight, uh, this plan uh, was uh, created by a committee at Parnell. 
and it has started and will continue throughout uh, the 2019-2020 school year. Okay, and um, there are two areas of focus. The first area, uh, compelling and aligned vision, mission, goals, values, focused on a safe environment with high expectations, was the first um, part of the turnaround plan for the campus. They felt like um, that the highest lever was a positive school culture and to begin um, shaping that school culture would start with creating a vision. A vision that is branded by the um, current campus and that they continue to focus on and make shirts and uh, hang on the wall and get out in the community. So this was our first step um, with the committee and I'll just review the long-term focus was to build teacher capacity through observation and feedback cycles by increasing teacher capacity uh, to improve the absence of the teacher leadership and develop campus culture based on a shared vision that empowers teachers and students and um, and this information and um, is in the actual plan but I've built it on the slide and I believe you got a copy of the slides and um, the actual plan that we submit to TEA. TEA gives us a template to use and that's why that's um, in that format. Okay, these steps the campus will take to implement the key practices and the campus leadership team will go through the visioning process to create and collaborate with the campus staff to create this powerful brand for Parnell Elementary. And this is something that's already started in place at Parnell. And the campus will host parent nights to reach out to include an academic focus to build a stronger sense of community. Okay, throughout the visioning process, the um, campus created the vision. And if you'll see at the bottom, uh, this is the vision they created. Parnell Elementary, in partnership with families and community, will inspire, nurture, and empower students to achieve their full potential. And so they went through this um, visioning process. The visioning process is on the Texas um, Education Agency website. They went through that model. And then they brought the information to um, the whole entire Parnell staff that we have here and some of our members of that committee and the staff. And they solicited more feedback. And it was interesting to see. Um, they just changed a few words. And we brought it back to the committee. The committee. And we also have a parent on the committee here. Thank you, Ms. Larkin, for being here. And the, we uh, changed up a few uh, bits of language. Uh, where in partnership with families, um, I believe we had parents there. But we changed that to family. So, so just simple wording that we felt like that encompassed uh, the whole um, uh, campus beliefs and uh, moving forward with uh, driving that force. So um, we, uh, the committee met, discussed the ideas and input, feedback uh, was continued to be gathered, and I believe Mr. Davis is still going to continue to get feedback from the students also. Okay, our um, focus area number two is objective-driven daily lesson plans with formative assessments. Now this is something, uh, since we jumped right into the vision process, and uh, we'll continue with some literacy nights and um, more focused on academics for uh, parent evenings, this will be a more detailed process with the committee throughout the months of April and May and drive uh, and continue to drive the uh, improvement required focus for next school year. And um, it's all surrounding effective instruction. Of course, it will continue to build teacher capacity through the observation and feedback. And the administrative team will be walking in classrooms and also scheduling conferencing with teachers to give them that immediate feedback of this is what I see in the classroom to help you get better faster. And um, to also, and that's. Uh, also, Teach Like a Champion is a book that they are also using some videos and techniques um, to uh, uh, improve on getting better faster. Um, effective classroom procedures, instructional strategies, and data-driven instruction. Just like I mentioned earlier, that each six weeks, 
Um, they have a data analysis where they look at individualized test results and they disaggregate that by um, subgroups and that it will also be continued. The steps the campus will take to implement the key practices, the campus leadership team will go through a tuning process of the current lesson planning template to clearly define a template that will support the vision established by the campus. So to tie in the focus area number one and number two to continue to make the improvements at Parnell. Um, activities for focus number two, uh, uh, we just discussed uh, uh, the tuning process of the lesson plan template. Um, the TAP does require us to go through some step-by-step -step processes. Um, of course, when we go through these step-by-step -step processes, we put in our own tidbits of create a lesson plan template and we get a little more detailed. So this is the basic bullets. Communicate clear expectations and provide feedback submitted through the lesson plans. Okay. The campus contacts would be the Parnell principal, Mr. Davis, the assistant principal, uh, Ms. Carter, and myself, Ms. Willems. We also solicited feedback <coughs> and the feedback will also um, be given um, is required to be given with our targeted improvement plan to TEA and we have uh, conference calls and we have region um, five representatives that help us through this process also and I just wanted to go over a few things the turnaround plan was posted on the Par Parnell website for 30 days with a survey to solicit input and the survey resulted in 12 responses with five stating they received the plan. So they clicked on the button with the plan and uh, went into a few more details. And TEA requires us to publicly let you know the results of the um, information. So the responses of uh, creating the vision, so we did put the vision on the um, website. The responses were Parnell will be unable to be successful until students are taught at home to be respectful of the school and the school personnel and talked about bullying. The vision statement is great. I'd love to see it put into action and that'll work if we make it more inviting to parents. Love it. The vision is what all educators live to accomplish. Um, the morale of the staff appears to be extremely low and the lack of student discipline is hampering the learning and sounds good, sounds good. So that was our comments and our feedback from um, creating the vision on the um, Parnell uh, website. And those will be reported to um, TEA as a soliciting information for our plan. Any questions? Has there been any... Uh Next Tuesday, we're doing at Parnell interim assessments uh, through TEA where they're all testing online, but we'll get results back within 48 hours. Okay. And so it will be a true mock assessment. Yes. At, at Parnell and FEW will be participating in reading and math. Yes. So I look forward to seeing those results. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Oh, oh, I do have an action item. Yep. Okay. The turnaround plan for Parnell Elementary is required due to the campus's 2018 <coughs> state accountability rating of improvement required year two. The turnaround plan focuses on those indicators missed in the state and federal accountability system. The process of developing the turnaround plan follows a protocol to set forth by the Texas Education Agency of continuous improvement for campuses. <coughs> An additional requirement is that campuses must solicit input on the plan. A survey was posted on the Parnell website for 30 days. The information from the survey was reviewed with the turnaround presentation and will be submitted to Texas Education Agency. The turnaround plan um, also includes a resolution that is attached in your packet the administration recommends the approval of the turnaround plan for Parnell Elementary and the resolution as presented. We have a recommendation to approve the turnaround plan for Parnell <coughs> Elementary and the resolution as presented. Do we have a motion? Second. We have a motion by Mr. Webb, a second by Mr. Stephen Martinez. Any questions? 
You had said a while ago that only 12 took this. Mm -hmm. um, how did we, how did we advertise this or put it out there to the campus so that? It was on the uh, main page of the website and I believe they sh it was shared on Facebook and uh, solicited and it was in English and Spanish. Well, I was just curious if were the staff, were they notified that this was available mm -hmm. for them to, mm -hmm. that's what I'm curious, yes. thank you. Yes, thank you. Any other questions? If none, all in favor of the motion for the plan is presented, show a right hand. All opposed, like sign, there are none, so it carries <coughs> six to zero. Thank you very much. Our next item will be a presentation from the committee working on the District of Innovation Plan, Ms. Cordova and Mr. Hawkins. She's bringing it to you. opportunity for the committee to meet and get together. This has been a very eye-opening experience, I think, for all of us. Um, first, I want to recognize all the committee members that are here. So if you're on the DOI committee, then, uh, team, would you please stand up and let us see that we're all here and who's available. Awesome. Countless hours from these people have um, been pouring through. So. Several are out of town on different meetings and can't be here, but we've had a great turnout on all of our meetings that we've had. I would say at least 85 to 90 percent of the um, meetings that everybody was there unless they were out of town or couldn't make it. So um, time and effort has definitely been being brought to the table. I think uh, we did a figure the other night. It was over 250 hours compiled together that we put into this. So. Um, each person that's had input has made an uh, impact on this. Um, so a lot of this is already things that we know, but in case there's someone here that doesn't already know this, we're just going through what is a district of innovation. Um, it gives schools, districts, most of the flexibilities we're able to Texas open and charter schools. Most of the information on the first few slides are things that we already know. What are the flexibilities available under the innovative plan? There's a list that are allowable that's put out by TA, and this is a short list of what's available. And then there's also, you know, a list of no-goes, the list that, um, that you cannot exempt yourself from. And there's quite a few of those as well. Um, go ahead, too. So whenever we all met on the first night, we decided to, that y'all had put us in charge of developing a plan if we saw that we needed one to assess the needs of the district. And the talk around the room that we were all really concerned about was recruiting and retaining effective and qualified teachers to continuously improve student outcomes. That sense to me that kept being a reoccurring thing that we all kept coming back to. So with that in mind, that is what we have set our goal to make the plan about. Um, the list from TASB, the list of things that you can exempt yourself from, is kind of long. There's several pages of things. We, everybody had a copy of this. We all looked at it. There's a lot of stuff in here that I, for one, and others of the uh, committee have no idea if it would help the district or not because it's not our thing. I mean, there's things on here that that pertain to us and what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, unfortunately, if we would have had maybe either some of you all or some administration <laughs> on the committee that could give us some insight on 
things that we don't know anything about that might have been helpful. But since we didn't, we went with what we know, with the parents and community leaders and teachers coming together and just talking about what we all know. Every campus was represented. Um, so therefore, everything we talked about, we, we learned a lot. For instance, myself, I learned a lot from the junior high standpoint, what some of this stuff looks like from the high school standpoint, or for over a few. So that was very informative for all of us. The data that you're seeing in time straight from the Taper Report, similar like the one y'all looked at earlier from 2017-18. This data that we have here is one of the reasons why we focused on that goal. If you look, those our district turnover rate, those are big numbers. And that's not what we want for our students. We want to have teachers here that are qualified and effective and that are going to stay here and be a part of it and buy into our community and want the same things that we do. Um, so where we're at right now, what all have we already done to just kind of get this process rolling? This woman sent me this timeline today. Um, this is just the timeline for the first few um, Thank you. We worked well together. <laughs> <laughs> um, these were the first steps that we've already uh, accomplished through the timeline. This is just things that have already been done. And then the next slide shows you the rest of step one that has been done on those dates. That's where we're at. So um, the next part would be for the plan development, which is where we're <coughs> going to be in. We have um, met several times. Go ahead, go ahead do that. So we're at step two where the District of um, Innovation <coughs> is starting to develop, not just development, but researching and um, assessing the needs of the district and identifying which ones we could be exempt from that would be helpful. Um, and so we're here today to just update you so you know where we're at. But we also would like some feedback and some suggestions for you before we actually um, finalize the draft to be put on the website for 30 days. Um, we do have a rough draft. We have not included it, but we, did, we do have some <coughs> um, items to, to share with y'all that, that will be on the plan so you can uh, know what we're looking at. So go back one more. Go back one more. These are just tentative dates after we meet here and get some feedback from y'all. We would like to, um, oh, I almost forgot one of the biggest influences that have helped us so much. Dr. Byron Terrier couldn't be here today from Region 5, but he has been such a huge help with us. Um, he told us from day one he was Switzerland, but he was there to help us with anything, you know, help us with anything we needed. And he has been wonderful. He had another obligation tonight and the whole week they're busy. So tentatively, after hearing, giving y'all a little time to get back with us and give us some feedback, we're going to hopefully meet around the 22nd, and then the timeline would be, um, oh no, we're going to meet before the 22nd, I think the 19th, and then by the 22nd, hopefully they'll put it on the website for the 30 days to solicit the feedback from the public, find out what they um, had to say, and then it would be tentative again. These are just the steps that are, you know, have to be, to play out the whole time. And then the last step would be, after all of that, it would come back to y'all for a vote from the um, from the board to either approve it or not. When we first started looking the first night, Dr. Terry gave us this, um, um, it's a compile, of, it shows you like what the most important, or not important, the most popular ones are. So at the bottom, um, the you know start school date and all that's the one that most of the districts have chosen and then you can go through the other list of the ones that were um, the most popular ones on the different list that came from well all the statewide all the region statewide. five for sure yeah I mean I know and he pulled it from somewhere out there where he chose he pulled it from, from maybe from Tasby I'm not real sure but that um 
gives it to us. It's the school day, certification, class size, min uh, maximum and minimum minutes, and then attendance rate, teacher appraisal, and there's more. Those are the bottom ones down there, the most popular ones on the different plans. Um, the plans that are from like the other 820 or so districts. Um, I did a little bit more investigation to give the committee a little bit of, um, from from Region 5 schools. Go ahead and click on that if you would. So, no, no, will it let you click on it? Oh, I may have to. Can, can you click on it with a mouse? If you'll click on the table, it'll pop out there. Um, Click on the table itself. It won't come out. Okay. Okay. Well, this was a. Um, we looked at all the region five districts, and we looked to see, okay, if they are new, the, what did they choose? And we had narrowed it down kind of looking at these three things, and we were looking at them. Um, I can I can send that to y'all. There's something you'd like. I mean, I can send it to you. Um, we looked at the ones that are in Region Five, but then as I looked at that list, a lot of those schools we were they don't really compete with because a lot of region five were so long those are further south so we don't compete with them as much so on that thank you so at the bottom i even pulled up um the non-region five districts zavala lufkin west of being brought us san augustine Kentville, shelbyville center huntington school districts that are even closer to us but not in region five and we looked at those to see which ones they chose to be on their plans if they had um, so we based some of our decision based off of that. Who are we competing against? Or again, highly qualified teachers, and where are they going? To be, you know what we could do to entice them to come to us to become a you know a, a bulldog. So go ahead. I'll, I'll try to get y'all that list if you want to see it. So one of the things that we kept um, talking about was the calendar flexibility. We had a really good discussion the other night because um, Mr. McCullough from the high school, he's like, you know that calendar thing, it keeps me in a big talk, but I don't see the big deal. Well, for him, it might not have affected him that much. Then Mr. Molina was like, well, I do have, you know, semester-long classes. It affects him a lot. Teachers of you are like, well, as far as semesters, that doesn't really affect us. So there's a lot of different things that are involved with the calendar that affect different areas of the district. And one of the things that some people weren't aware of is the drop date for teachers. The later we start in school, the later our, our 45 days that you can resign and get out of your contract, the further it's pushed back. So if the area schools, Kirkville and different ones are starting a week, seven days ahead of us, their drop date is also that far back. So if we have an opening, a teacher resigns on the last day we have an opening and then the area schools where you draw from your might get a teacher to come from they're stuck in their contract so they can't come and i know that we had a couple of incidences with a junior high that that is exactly what happened we lost a history teacher and we had one wanting to come but he was stuck in his contract with the office so he couldn't come so the drop date plays a big part of why the calendar is important. The extra week of instruction before testing, as a math teacher that gives a test that's counted, that extra week is huge. We, um, Ms. Harrison and Ms. McKnight, and I, we talked about it, that those two weeks that we have between the time that we give our first test and we get the results back and we have two weeks to remediate, make a huge difference. So another week of instruction, you know, front-loading it, helps us also. And again, I talked about the, um, the equal semester links, where we have government and um, economics, where 
He's trying to teach the whole same curriculum in a shorter span time in the fall than he is in the spring. Same curriculum, trying to either stretch one of them out or cram one of them in. So the leveling out the semesters also helps with the extra week or so coming back. <coughs> so the calendar flexibility, it's mainly, there's a lot of things that helps, but it mainly allows us to either start school a little earlier than the fourth um, Monday in August, which is what is state mandated. Um, the teacher certification exemption, we had a lot of discussion about this. Um, it would give us a little bit more con uh, control over hiring. I know that, I mean, kudos to our CTE department that was here earlier. Uh, they're doing a great job over there. And um, this teacher certification thing just would give some flexibility for hiring uh, CTE instructors that not, aren't maybe not exactly certified teachers, but they are instructors and they are certified in the field to where maybe they could come and teach some of the different things. There's so much more we could offer, but there's not very many certified teachers in, you know, AC repair or whatever. Um, it also, uh, we, there's a couple of things that we, we talked about. We definitely decided, I think it was a consensus, or at least we came to a consensus that we would prefer on the, um, anybody that would be hired to have a four-year degree, especially in like the high school if someone has a, you know, a degree in science or that they could teach at the high school level and come in and um, we did put some uh, guidelines in there about how long it would take them, you know, to start working on their certification and get that done. But we would like to be able to say that they were being paid, you know, better than they are if they're just getting long-term sub pay and not because they're not a teacher. Um, I think we had a couple of teachers we talked about that are making not a lot of money, but we're also taking money out of their check to pay for their teacher program. And, you know, but we expect them to do everything that they, all the other teachers are doing, but we're not paying them like a teacher. But if you want the results of it, someone to do a teacher's job, you need to pay them like they're being, to pay them for the job they're doing until they can get certified. And that, of course, might entice them to be able to, you know, come back and actually make it their, their career in this people. Um, the teacher contract days, um, we looked at several. Um, there are, in the list that I, that I had for the non-Region 5, there were four of them <coughs> that offer this. The Ball, West of Bean, Broadus, and St. Augustine all have shortened their teacher contract days from 187 days to 182 days. That does increase your daily rate. I know there was some concern that uh, some people were talking about that if they had to be absent, that that would um, be a you know more increase of money when they're absent every day. Um, I believe that Karen Byerly did a, um, kind of ran some numbers for us, and she looked at it on the midpoint at the midpoint doing that, 